Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today's topic is about predicting production from a future well. Typically, you'd probably use something like a type well to do this, but what if you have some basic assumptions about the rock or the lateral length or the number of fractures that you intend to complete the well with? Well, then we have the opportunity to make a more reliable forecast. And we're going to actually combine a numerical reservoir model with Monte Carlo risk analysis. And this is all using the Harmony Enterprise software. Let me show you how. So of course with an undrilled well or a future well, we don't have production history. And that's typically what RTA is used for, analyzing a well's production history. In this case, we're gonna create a brand new well, a well that's gonna be brought online in the future. So I need to give this well some basic inputs about its properties. So I'm gonna put my initial pressure in, temperature, net pay, porosity, saturation. Now, of course, I may not have very good confidence in these, and that's okay. That's why we're using Monte Carlo risk analysis. But my oil gravity, my bubble point, this works for gas condensator gas as well. I'm just using a an oil case here. So now I need to set up my reservoir model. I'm using, of course, the really fast numerical hybrid model. So I can start inputting some of my guesses about the completion, things like that. Okay, so I've already set up kind of the X and Y of my reservoir dimensions. I've made my lateral 5,000 feet long, and I'm saying uh, my wells are going to be on about 110 acre spacing. Uh, you can change this to whatever you want. some good fracture connectivity, 25 fracture stages. I'm going to make my permeability 10 micro darcies in the SRV, 1 micro darcy in the matrix. And this XI, this basically describes this area of the SRV in this dimension. Um, so just to make it simple, I'm going to make it like this, which would be kind of like a composite reservoir. So I've set up my reservoir description. Next, I need to create a forecast from this. And to do that, we're gonna put in a 10-year forecast and I'm gonna actually kind of gradually ramp my drawdown from 2,500 PSI down to 1,000 PSI over that 10-year forecast. And guess what? It just made a 10-year forecast that quickly. We're starting off at about 1,000 barrels per day in oil and then we're declining. We can even see our GUR predicted to increase as we drop below the bubble point. Um, and we can go back to the initial model setup and just run that again and see how the uh, pressure and saturations are going to change over the 10 years of this well producing. One thing that was kind of interesting is when I was looking at this uh, pressure map here at the end of 10 years, if I decided to double my area or basically have uh, lighter well spacing like this over 10 years we actually don't even increase our EUR very much by increasing the total area because the matrix perm is so low we're not actually accessing much of that rock that's farther away so that was just an interesting thing to do here so I'm going to go back to 115 acre spacing so this is so far, none of this has to do with Monte Carlo risk analysis in fact the forecast we get from this the EUR this is what we call a deterministic model. It's just one of many possible forecasts we could have. Remember, we don't have a lot of certainty around any of these inputs because we don't have any actual production history to calibrate it on. And that's where this tab comes in here, probabilistic. So all of these inputs here, these are all things that we have uncertainty about, that there might be a range of reservoir properties for 
which can change the forecast and the economics. So you're welcome to pick any of these. I'm going to pick a few. I'm going to say I have some uncertainty about my initial reservoir pressure. So I'm going to put a uh, normal distribution with the lowest being uh, maybe 5,500 pounds. I don't think it could be higher than 6,500 pounds. So we're going to be sampling a whole bunch, hundreds of initial reservoir pressures when we do this numerical model forecast. I'm also going to try maybe my number of fractures. I don't really have a lot of confidence in what that could be. So I'm going to say it could be as few as 20 fractures or maybe as high as 30. So we're going to sample all that. Maybe our oil saturation is something we have some uncertainty about. So I'm going to say it could be as low as 50%. It could be as high as 65%. And then maybe our matrix perm. This usually has a pretty big impact on the EUR long term. So I'll say it could be as low as half a micro Darcy or 500 nanos or as high as two micro Darcy's. So you can put any of these inputs in where you have some uncertainty about including the well spacing. Um, yeah, I just picked four of them in this case. Uh, another option is if you think there's some sort of relationship, we call these dependencies. For example, if you think there's some sort of correlation between number of fractures and the matrix permeability, I'm, I, you can specify that. So when I enter the number one, one means it's going to, every time it samples a low matrix perm value, it's going to sample a low number of fracts. So you, you're kind of forcing a strong correlation. You can have weaker correlations by putting a fraction like 0.8 in and it'll be a little bit noisier. You can also put negative correlations in. Um, so I'm just going to leave this out of here for now, but I want to show you that's available. So we're basically ready to forecast and run the simulation. So when I do this, it's looking back at that base model that I just showed you, but now it's picking all these different possible inputs and running a numerical multi-phase forecast for each combination of these input parameters. It's already done 16 forecasts. The reason we're able to do this so quickly is because our numerical model is incredibly fast. I'm just using a very basic laptop to do this. If you have a more powerful computer, this will probably be even faster. Okay, so it's decided it's done enough runs. Let's check out the results. Okay, so we have four plots here. The one in the top right is our rate versus time forecast, and we actually get probabilistic forecasts. We get a P90, a P50, and a P10 forecast. Now you can always, if you want to, you, want, you can export these. You can just simply say copy, and then if you were to paste in a spreadsheet, you get your, your P10, P50, P90, uh, the forecasts, the dates, uh, that's an option for you. You can also view the gas forecasts and we see that GOR or the gas rate increasing as we drop below the bubble po point. We can see our water forecasts, see the range of those as well. On the right this is just the same thing but rate versus cum in this case. So on the bottom left we get this table of the uh, P90, P50, P10 both inputs as well as the results for volume and EUR for each of the fluids. On the right you can see the histogram is kind of reacting based on what input I'm selecting. We can also show a cumulative distribution function plot uh, for all of the models that were run and what the inputs were. Okay, so quite a bit of information here and again you can copy all of this and get it out however you want. One thing that's pretty interesting as well is if you click on this Excel button up here in the top left, it's going to let you save 
a table. Okay, and that table is going to spit out all of the inputs, for example, the initial pressure inputs that were sampled, the number of fractures that were sampled, all of these inputs plus the resulting EUR. So from here you can start to do things like uh, cross plots or look for what sort of inputs affect and combination of inputs affect the EUR, the recovery factor, etc. I've just already color coded these just to make it a bit easier to see. Now one of the last things you may want to do is get these forecasts out to your reserves software. So to do that we need to create a decline, right? The language of reserves. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rate time plot. I can see that I've got my P90 forecast here from the numerical model, my P50, my P10. We'll add a traditional decline and we're going to fit the decline in this case over the P50 forecast. I'm going to just tweak my decline so it kind of fits a little bit better here, matches the shape of the numerical P50 forecast. Okay, and I can see that I'm getting pretty close. I might have to do a two segment. Um, in fact, there's another video I did a few weeks ago. Let me know if you can't find it, but it shows the whole process about how to fit this decline. But I can see that my decline EUR is 237,000 barrels and my numerical model EUR is very similar. So from here I can go ahead and say export and I can get this into Mosaic, Valnav, Ares, whatever reserve software you're using. And you can do one of these declines for the P10, for the P50, for the P90. So ultimately what does this mean for you? Well, now you don't just have to use a type well. If you have some estimates or guesses about the reservoir properties about your completion, you can use physics to actually bracket the uncertainty of your well's forecast, just like I showed you. The other thing is you can also finally consider the multi-phase behaviors that you might experience in your well when doing these forecasts. And that's it. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and definitely subscribe to be notified of next week's Did You Know episode.